Hey guys, in this video, I'd like to discuss about antibiotics. So, what are these antibiotics? Antibiotics are the substances which are produced from the microorganism to kill the other bacteria. Right? So, we know what are these antibiotics. We have various ways to classify the antibiotics. So, in that one way to classify the antibiotics is bacteriostatic bacteriostatic and bacteriocidal right so what are these bacteriostatic antibiotics so bacteriostatic antibiotics are the group of antibiotics which stop the growth of the bacteria so they will stop the growth right so when I am talking about bacteriocidal antibiotics, so bacteriocidal antibiotics are the antibiotics which kill the bacteria, which means bacteria has an important constituent that is called as cell wall, right? So when cell wall is inhibited, what will happen? The bacteria won't be able to survive. So bacteriocidal are the group of antibiotics which kill the bacteria, which kill the bacteria, right? So, apart from this, there is another way to classify the antibiotics that is called as spectrum, based on the spectrum of action. So, what does it mean, spectrum of action? Spectrum of action is nothing but on the which group of bacteria the antibiotics will work. So, for example, if I am telling narrow spectrum antibiotics, so they work only to a particular bacteria or only to particular groups of bacteria. When I am telling broad spectrum antibiotics, they have their <coughs> action wide range which means they can act on the multiple groups of the bacteria. So based on the spectrum we can classify into narrow spectrum and broad spectrum. Right. So these are the two, <coughs> two classification of the antibiotics based on the spectrum. So apart from based on the spectrum we can classify the antibiotics based on their action so how exactly they work on the bacteria right so based on that we can classify antibiotics for example the bacteria which inhibit the cell wall synthesis so bacteria which inhibit the protein synthesis of the bacteria so if there is no protein synthesis bacteria cannot multiply so if i'm telling bacterial cell wall is inhibited what, what does it mean so there is no growth of the cell wall if there is no growth of the cell wall bacteria cannot survive right so they are the inhibitors of cell wall synthesis so, we will discuss mainly in this video on the cell wall synthesis inhibitors. That is cell wall synthesis inhibitors. So, these cell wall synthesis inhibitors has many groups of antibiotics listed in them that includes penicillins, We have cephalosporins, cephalosporins, we have monobactams, we have carbapenems, we have one more drug called as vancomycin. So vancomycin belongs further into a group of antibiotics they are called as glycopeptides. They are called as glycopeptides. Right. So <clears throat> these are the list of antibiotics which come under the category of cell wall synthesis inhibitors. So one thing common about penicillin, cephalosporins, monobactams and carbapenems is they have beta lactam ring. What is it? Beta lactam ring. So, what is the use of this beta lactam ring? Beta lactam ring is the one which majorly inhibits the cell wall synthesis. So, by now we have an idea how exactly they will work. They have beta lactam ring, their beta lactam will, ring will inhibit the cell wall synthesis. Right. So, we will start discussing about the penicillins. Right. So, if I mention anyway, spectrum of action, what does it mean? Spectrum of action means 
on which group of bacteria they work. So penicillins have the spectrum of action gram positive and coxi. Right. So gram positive infections we have many. For example, Listeria we have, we have Gonorrhea, Neisseria. <coughs> right. Coxi, coxi we have Staphylococci, Streptococci. Right. So these are the spectrum of action. So if I am telling gram positive and coxi is a spectrum of action of penicillins, which means I can use it in the infections with the gram positive and coxi infection. Right. So these penicillins are further divided and they have something called natural penicillins they have something called natural penicillins right so from what natural penicillins are derived so if it is natural penicillins they are they are derived from something which is existing in the nature right so they are derived from fungus they are derived from fungus right so natural penicillins include two drugs that is penicillin B penicillin B and penicillin G right so these are the two antibiotics which belong to natural penicillins so <coughs> obviously natural pen penicillins have the spectrum of action that is gram positive and coxide right so <coughs> I discussed I told the story of natural penicillins but how exactly how exactly these all penicillins work on the bacteria right so we'll discuss that they have three factors for the mechanism of action that is one is penicillin binding proteins i'll explain what it is penicillin binding proteins so these penicillin binding proteins are the substances which are the enzymes of the bacterial cell wall synthesis. What does it mean? So bacteria has some enzymes which involve in the cell wall synthesis of the bacteria and these penicillin can go and bind with them. So if they it can bind with them which means it doesn't allow the proteins to work and there is no cell wall synthesis <coughs> of the bacteria. Apart from that they have one more factor that is inhibition of transpeptidase. Inhibition of transpeptidase. So, if I am talking inhibition of transpeptidase, so it is also a type of penicillin binding protein. So, this transpeptidase is required for the process of transpeptidation. So, transpeptidation is a process in which cross linking is formed in the cell wall and which gives a morphology to the cell. Uh, cell of the bacteria. So if I am inhibiting the transpeptidase, there is no transpeptidation and there is no bacterial cell wall synthesis. Right. So we have one more factor that is autolysin. They work with the autolysin. So what exactly they will do? Bacteria will be producing cell wall synthesis and autolysin. So what exactly autolysin is doing? Autolysin is damaging the cell wall. Right, apart and bacteria on the other direction, it will be producing the new cell wall, synthesize cell wall. Right, so now autolysing is removing the cell wall and cell wall synthesis is happening. What we will do, we will just inhibit this cell wall synthesis. Right, so I already told you cell wall synthesis is inhibited by the penicillins. So if there is no cell wall synthesis, and these autolysins keep damaging the cell wall and the bacteria will be killed. So if I am telling bacteria is being killed, 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 what does it mean? They belong to a group of bacteriocidal antibiotics, right? So now we know the natural penicillins and generalized mechanism of action of the penicillins, right? So I would like to discuss the uses of natural penicillins. I already told you they can be used in gram positive infections. But I would like to mention some of them that is syphilis. Right? We have some more infections such as Listeria. Right? 
So apart from this, there are many other streptococcus is there, staphylococcus is there. They are also belongs to gram positive, right? So now we know the natural penicillins. Now we will discuss about another group of penicillins that is anti-staphylococcal penicillins. What are they called? Anti-staphylococcal penicillins. So what does it mean? Anti-staphylococcal penicillins, the word itself clearly tells us that they work against the staphylococcus bacteria. So if they are working against the staphylococcus bacteria, staphylococcus aureus causes <coughs> some infections. So to prevent that or to treat that, we can use this anti-staphylococcal penicillins, right? So we have two drugs that is methicillin. and oxacillin right so these two drugs belong to anti staphylococcal penicillins right so all of us heard about infection called mrsa that is methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus right so this mrsa how exactly we find whether the bacteria is resistant to methicillin or not we <coughs> take the methicillin and we take the samples of the bacteria and we check the sensitivity of the bacteria to the methicillin. So this methicillin and oxacillin they have high nephrotoxic effect, high nephrotoxic effect. So as a result of high nephrotoxic property they are not used in a clinical practice. So only the use of methicillin and oxacillin mainly to find the sensitivity to the <coughs> staphylococcus aureus. So based on that we can decide whether it is methicillin resistant or methicillin sensitive. So if it is sensitive then we can use the other groups of penicillins and treat that. Right. So this is a story of our anti staphylococcal penicillins. So after anti staphylococcal penicillins we have one more group of penicillin that is anti staphylococcal penicillins we have so we have one more group of penicillin that is extended spectrum penicillins. Extended spectrum penicillins. So these extended spectrum penicillin, the sentence clearly says us that what exactly is happening? Their spectrum is extended. Means earlier the penicillins were working against gram positive and coxarent. Now these penicillins, extended spectrum penicillins, whatever belong to this group, they also have effect on the gram negative bacteria. Right? So they also have the effect on the gram negative. So we have two group, two drugs in that amoxicillin and ampicillin. So now one advantage we can use them in the gram positive gram negative and coxide but we cannot surely say that they work against the all groups of gram negative but they have a little action towards the gram negative bacteria so here i wrote ampicillin so this ampicillin is a drug of choice is a drug of choice for listeria infection this is a drug of choice for the listeria infection right so one more advantage of these extended spectrum penicillins is that we can use them orally. What does it mean we can use them orally? So other penicillins, whenever I used to use them orally, what used to happen? They were destroyed by gastric acids present in the stomach. So, but these extended spectrum penicillins have that resistance and they can be used orally, right? So this is a story of our extended spectrum action penicillins. After this, we have one more group of penicillins that is called as anti-pseudomonas penicillins. What are they called as? Anti-pseudomonas. So this anti-pseudomonas penicillin include two drugs that is carbencillin and one more drug that is called as piperacillin. Right. 
So these are the drugs which belong to the anti-pseudomonas penicillins, which means they are used in the treatment of the pseudomonas aeruginosa infection. So pseudomonas aeruginosa produces a blue colored pus. So some places they also refer it as blue pus bacillus, right? So we discussed the some of the uses of the penicillins and classification of the penicillin mechanism of the penicillins, right? Now few important points we need to know about the side effects and how these penicillins are administered. So we need to know mode of administration, mode of administration, right? So mode of administration, I earlier told if they were used what was happening, orally what was happening, they were destroyed by the gastric juices. So we can use them intravenously, right? We can use them intramuscular and we can use them orally only few penicillins that is the ones which had some effect that is extended spectrum of action penicillin they might be used orally. Right. So I want to tell one peculiar property of the intramuscular that is intramuscular penicillins are used in the form of deport. Used in the form of deport. So what we will do, we will inject the penicillin intramuscularly and these penicillins are absorbed very slowly and they have a long duration of the action, right? So in deport form, we can use benzathine penicillin, benzathine penicillin. So when we use this benzathine penicillin, benzathine penicillin, it is a type of Penicillin G, we can use them in the prophylaxis of rheumatic disease. Prophylaxis of the rheumatic disease. Right. So we have one more penicillin that is called as benzide penicillin. And we have one more penicillin that is called as propane penicillin. So this benzyl penicillin and propyl penicillin also are subtypes of the penicillin G. So these <coughs> are used in the treatment of syphilis. Right. So this is the mode of administration of the penicillins. So we know the mode of administration. Now we need to know the side effects. Right. So before going to side effects, I would like to discuss one more group of antibiotics that is penicillinase inhibitors. So as a result, I was using the penicillins in the bacterial infection. The bacteria started to produce some enzymes called as penicillinases. What are they called as? Penicillinases. So what is this penicillinases? The name itself says that they will break or damage the penicillin break penicillins. Now if I have a bacteria which can produce the penicillinase, what is the use of using penicillins, right? So there is no use. What we can do? We can inhibit the penicillinase. What we can do? We can inhibit the penicillinase. The drugs which inhibit the penicillinase that include clavulanic acid, clavulanic acid and we have one more drug that is salbactam right so these two are the drugs which inhibit the penicillinase so what can i do i can combine the penicillin with the penicillinase inhibitor and i can give the drug for example we have one drug named as agumentin agumentin is a combination of amoxicillin and the clavulanic acid right so this is how we combine the various forms and we we can get the best effects from these drugs, right? So now I'd like to discuss about the side effects. So side effects of penicillins. Side effects of penicillin include hypersensitive reaction. Hypersensitive reaction. They can cause diarrhea. Apart from that, so I earlier told methicillin was nephrotoxic. So that is also one of the side effects that is nephrotoxicity. 
but this nephrotoxicity is not exerted by all the penicillins but mainly the methicillin the, the group of penicillins which were anti staphylococcal has a nephrotoxic property right apart from that we have one more specific property during the treatment of syphilis they can cause yarish erixheimer phenomenon that is erich erixheimer reaction this erich erixheimer reaction it is a type of immune response which is produced in the treatment of syphilis right so these are the side effects of the penicillins right so we have discussed all types of penicillins their mechanism of action mode of administration right and side effects so for the other groups of antibiotics i'll make the further videos keep following us thank you